Team Kestava, what is up? Rich, back here again with another example for you. This time, we're diving back into seismic design. Now, we have a, um, a user or a team member who had suggested, hey, I'm doing um, a design for a school project. They're in college or university, I take it. And it's kind of their senior thesis or their senior project. And they are doing the right now the lateral design for uh, seismic demand on their structure. And they're trying to figure it out. So we've gone over kind of the um, seismic design procedure, the lateral procedure using equivalent lateral forces. Now we are going to go over a brief example on how to determine your seismic mass, your effective seismic weight, um, which obviously you need to use in those equations in the equivalent lateral force procedure. Um, last time I did the problem, I just gave us a mass and we ran with it. Same with the 13-story problem. We were given a mass per floor and just ran with it, or a weight per floor. This time we're going to break down and say, well, how do we find those weights? So let's jump right in. Uh, all right, so we have here um, uh, two views, elevation and a plan view. Plan is on the right, as denoted. Elevation is on the left. We have a perfectly square building. So this is going to be really simplistic just to drive the point home of how we determine our mass. It doesn't need to be complex, but uh, in the real world, this gets a little more complicated and takes a little more thought because buildings are complex and there's a lot of materials that are involved and architects love to do some crazy things. But today, it's just real simple, so just roll with me on it. Uh, so plan, we have a 20 foot by 20 foot building and then in elevation, it's 10 feet tall. The dash that I have here, that is just a suspended ceiling, uh, suspended acoustical ceiling. So this is, we're going to say, is like a commercial building. Um, it's not someone's home. You don't usually see acoustic in someone's home and more in those shops. It's that white kind of foam um, board that hangs down from ceilings. So that I just thrown that little twist in here. And you might say, well, how do we go about this? Well, it's really just determining how much the building weighs. That's all it is. And what I like to use is actually the uh, American Institute of Steel Construction Manual, the AISC. You can either use the 14th edition or the 15th edition. Today, I'm going to jump into a PDF that's the 15th edition, but they both have the same table that I'm going to go to. So let's hop right over. So here we are, table 17-13. And this is, if you see, miscellaneous data. And what's really nice is that, whoa, that's a really big pen size. <laughs> Guess not. Okay. Is weights of building materials. Boy, that's pretty handy. Yeah, this book has freaking everything. You just need to go looking for it. There's like 2,000 pages. But um, So let's pull our weights. You can see they're defined in PSF, pounds per square foot, and that's perfect for us. So let's grab what we need. So first we're going to go floors since it's a single story and it's acting, that weight is acting at the floor. We'll just say it's a slab on grade structure, so there's no that, that uh, weight of that slab is just transmitted directly to um, the ground. So for seismic, we don't need to include that. If there was a, um, I don't want to say this, if there was a basement below, we'd have to maybe do some things a little differently, but real simple today. So floors, we don't need to look into. Let's move next to roofs. Um, roofs, let's say we have, so this is commercial. So it's going to be wood framed commercial. I'm going to say I'm doing it on the fly here. So wood framed, um, and they're going to do uh, a wood diaphragm on top with wood joists. So let's say, and then they're just going to do rigid insulation. So we have rigid insulation. You have wood sheathing, three quarter inch, we'll say. So we have three PSF for wood sheathing. Uh, Insulation, you have one and a half inches, that's usually, or one and a half PSF, and two buys, uh, let's see, you don't see it here. Um, oh, we do have the acoustical ceiling, so let's move up here. Uh, ceiling, acoustical fiber tile, add another pound per square foot for that. Uh, wood studs, they're saying, are two by fours at 12 to 16 inches on center is 2 PSF. Well, let's kind of run with that criteria for our roof framing. Let's say it's just 2 by. And actually, you know what? Since it's a 20-foot span, let's be more realistic. We're not going to get those spans with dimensional lumber. We're going to need some engineered uh, wood eye joists um, or, or open web joists. And those come from usually a manufacturer. 
So let's assume 5 PSF, but you could think about it like, um, you could look at a manufacturer's spec sheet. Uh, Red Built is a common one out here, and they give you the loading criteria for, for the weight of their joists that you might be using. So, but for today, we'll say 5 PSF. So that's everything for our roof. So let's, let's hold up here. Let's go back and write all that down. So we have sheathing is three. The joists are five. That's eight. Uh, the rigid insulation is one and a half. Let's bump that up to two. So that gets us to 10 PSF. And then we have the acoustical ceiling, which is one PSF. So let's add that. So we're at 11 PSF. All right, so that is going to be our roofing. So let's hop back. We have the roof equaling 11 PSF. But then you also have, to make a building work, um, you know, you have HVAC, you have plumbing, you have electrical, you have all that, all those utilities that are running through your building, or the guts of it to really make it work. Those are going to be stuffed up in your ceiling, and hence that's the point of your acoustical ceiling, because you're going to have ducting all in here that's all going to be hidden by the acoustical ceiling. So let's allot 3 PSF for that. And again, that's just more from an experience standpoint, but you could just really research and say, how much does electrical typically weigh? How much does pipe conduit typically weigh? You know, it's really just looking up how much stuff weighs. That's all it is. There's no difference for seismic uh, mass. So we will assume three PSF today. So we're going to add three PSF to give us a grand total of 14 PSF. Okay. Um, the slab, we said we're not including, so now we just need walls. So let's jump back. So walls, we have wood studs. We're going to say two by four. That, that's going to be adequate for this building. 12 to 16 inches on center, so you can see it over here. So we're going to use two PSF for that. And then we have, we're going to have drywall on it. You know, it's going to be finished. It's going to be commercial space. So right down there, let's say um, five-eighths inch drywall. So that's going to put us at another two and a half, <clears throat> excuse me, two and a half PSF. And then we're going to go a little further down and we're going to say that it's just one big open space. There's no interior partitions, which again, just for simplicity sake, there's going to be smaller rooms inside of that. But let's just say there's only exterior walls. Typically when we figure out our seismic mass, you have, you classify exterior walls and interior walls because the exterior walls have the skin, you know, it could be brick, veneer, it could be something most of the time a lot heavier than your interior partitions, which is just two by wood framing or light gauge metal with some drywall on it and some insulation. Like that's it for inside typically. And the, the heaviest it could be is a shear wall, which is still usually nothing in comparison to the exterior walls. So little tip for you, it is commonly... Um, divided into exterior and interior walls, and you find the weight of each wall separately, and then the length of each wall um, you multiply by and to get your total mass of walls. But for just today, we just have exterior. So we said two for the wood studs, two and a half for the drywall, which is on the inside. And then the outside, we're going to say we have a nice little fancy brick veneer. We're going to do a four inch. It's going to be like kind of your, your typical old school um, fire engine brick type of construction, just the little bricks, nothing fancy here. So you see right here under walls, we're going to go uh, four inch brick, which is 40 pounds per square foot. So you can see how heavy that brick is. So weight's important for seismic. It, it drives the whole design. So the heavier you're building, the more seismic uh, loading and effects your, your building is going to experience. It's important not to just gloss over this and make assumptions. You really want to try to hone this in. And if you're in a pinch and you really need to make things work and you're stretched, you can always come back to the weights and really try to define really precisely what everything is. Um, and then you have waterproofing, stuff like that, but that's all kind of minimal types of weights. So just for today, we're going to assume just those three things for the walls. So two, two and a half, and 40. So that's 44 and a half. Let's just round up to 45 PSF for the walls. Let's jump back. So walls, 45 PSF. I know I'm talking a lot today, team, but let's, uh, let's keep rolling through it. Just doing it on the fly. Feels good. Uh, feels right. All right, we have everything that we need. So all you do now is just multiply those um, pounds per square foot by some square footage. So roof we'll do first. Roof, you're going to use the plan view, and we're going to get... 
this entire area of the roof. So we have 20 by 20 is 400 square feet. A roof is 400 feet squared. And then for the perimeter of your wall, well, we know our wall is 10 feet, and we know that the perimeter is going to be 4 times uh, 20 feet because there's four 20 foot long walls. 10 times 20 is going to be the square footage of one wall. That's 200 square feet. And we're going to multiply that by four to get 800 square feet. So area of wall equals 800 square feet. All right. And now we just multiply by our two, uh, two factors here. So let's go over here. So weight, our seismic weight, is going to be 14 PSF times the area of our roof, which is going to be 400 square feet, plus 45 PSF, because that's our exterior walls, times 800 square feet, because that's how much exterior wall we have. That is going to equal 41,600 pounds, which is going to equal 41.6 kips. That is your seismic weight of your single story, very straightforward, generic, blah, bland building. But you know how to do it now. One thing I will jump into, this is the important thing with uh, seismic design. So it is the how much effective weight you can you need to assume for the lateral design of your building and you take half story height because what's happening i'll do it in green here in elevation we come straight across here so halfway up the building so equal equal you need to take this area of seismic mass when you're running your calculations for big w um, because, and then I'll draw on the other one in blue, because the other half, those, the, that weight is just transferring directly down into the base. So in terms of overturning um, and the design of your roof diaphragm, you only need to assume half height up to that floor and then half height above that floor. So if you have a multi-story building you know, if you got this going on, um, your seismic mass would be half story below worth of area and a half story above worth of area. And then that would be the force that helps break down to the translate to lateral forces at each story. So hence at the roof, the roof would just be half the weight unless the roof was really heavy for some reason because it would only be half of the wall height and then the full area of the floor at the roof, whereas everything else is a half story above and a half story below plus the floor. And then same thing at the bottom. At the bottom, you just have a half story going down directly to the base. So overall, your total seismic mass is the whole building because that sums up as base shear at the bottom. But in terms of overturning design and stuff like that and lateral design and design of your diaphragms, the, the seismic mass is split up, like I said, half story below and half story above when you're finding all your surfaces and stuff. So that's the one little trick here. But other than that, if we scroll back to the top here, seismic mass was that easy. So again, um, the big kicker here, I think, is just how to find that information. And a really good one that has a lot of common building materials is in the steel manual, um, back in table, what was it, 17-13, way in the back there. So Go to that as a starting point. It's great, especially if you're working on your uh, senior project there. That'll be more than adequate to, to help out because we do use that in the real um, professional world. So that's it. Another one done. Uh, hopefully I wasn't rambling too much. I'm trying this new system of uh, you guys watching me as I roll through, so it's a little more difficult to write, but I'll get it down for the team. Let me know in the comments if you like it uh, and, or if you don't, You know, if you just want me to hide my... My terrible face, I completely understand, and we can go back to the old way. Until next time, uh, if you haven't joined, get on in there. What are you waiting for? What are you scared of? Come on, just right there. Just right down there. Hit that notification bell if you want. You know, let the, let the rest of the team know you're at the door. So 
get in, give it a like if you liked it. Now I'll really say, until next time, this is Rich. See everybody later.